For Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, and today we've got a special guest on the podcast from ESPN and the ACC Network. It's Eric McLean, former Clemson Tiger captain. Eric, thanks for joining me. How are you doing in Charlotte? Yeah, man. Thank, thanks for having me on. Uh, excited to chat with you today about, about uh, you know, the Tar Heels. Super excited for, for them in this upcoming season. But we're doing good. We're doing good here in, the, in North Carolina and Charlotte. And, man, what a crazy, crazy time just trying to stay safe. Uh, and keep healthy. Hope the same for you. Coming from the ACC network, what were your initial thoughts when you heard that North Carolina was bringing Mac Brown out of retirement when he first got hired? Oh man, we were so jacked up. You know, number one, knowing him as a coach and, and being recruited uh, when he was at Texas, hearing the stories from back when he was at North Carolina, and then just getting to know him as, as a, a media uh, guy when he would come and, and have meetings with coaches or you know, some of us players before big games uh, and just really pick our brain, you know, as a color analyst and, and doing different things in the studio to then, you know, see him back in his element where he just thrives so much. Uh, and it's such a great thing for North Carolina, for college football. Uh, so we were more than jacked up uh, to know that Mac was going to be back. Yeah, a lot of people were excited that Mac Brown was back, but I don't think anyone really knew what to truly expect <laughs> going into the season, considering North Carolina had only won five games the previous two seasons. And then UNC goes out and beats a team you're familiar with, South Carolina, and then they beat Miami in week two. How surprised were you early on by North Carolina? You know, I think it was almost expected, right? Just talking with the coaching staff and, and hearing how special the player Sam Howell was and was going to be. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that it starts in, and finishes with what you have on the offense and defensive line of scrimmage. But when you have a special quarterback like that, they, they can just take you to different heights and, and to different places. So there never really was a game this season that was out of hand for North Carolina or a game that they weren't in uh, and had a fighting chance with. So I think when you look at that formula and, and we knew what they had coming in, it was just can you deliver – and, man, Sam Howell, just from snap one, you saw that he was such a different guy to where it was almost like, yeah, we're expecting to see these things week in and week out. You hit the biggest nail on the head, Sam Howell. He was the biggest reason for UNC's turnaround, in my opinion, to, like you said, he gives you a chance in every game that you're in. When yeah. you were at Clemson, you had the opportunity to work with some great quarterbacks, guys like Taj Boyd and Deshaun Watson. What did you see from Howell last year specifically where you thought he could be the guy? Uh, you know, re really from a leadership standpoint, especially being such a young guy, that's a hard thing to do, to come into a team and say, hey, this is my offense, this is my North Carolina team, get on my back, let's go. That's, that's very hard for a 17-, 18-year-old young man to be able to do uh, and then just to perform and stay so cool. There was never a moment that was too big for Sam. Uh, there, there was a couple of times in the fourth quarter in games where we'd be like, okay, let's see how he responds. Well, he plays better in the fourth quarter, and he plays better when those moments are, are so pressure-stricken and, and seem to have everything on uh, the, the shoulders of the quarterback. That's when he's at his best. So it was such a fun thing to be able to watch that, to watch his development over the season, to see him get more and more comfortable in the offense and, and watch the coaching staff – you know, just ease some stuff out. You know, you saw a very condensed playbook in those first couple of games by the bowl game against Temple. They, they had it all on the table, and, and it was all his offense. Even though they lost the Clemson game, I think that was a game that put a lot of the nation on notice that Carolina might not be as far away from contention as we previously had thought coming into the season. Went for the two-point conversion and yep. tried to beat Clemson. What was your biggest takeaway from that game, being so close to the Clemson program too? Uh, really just, just seeing the, the talent level and, and having guys there, but just finally taking that next step, right? So it wasn't like UNC was running around with a ton of true freshmen at every position. This was guys that have been there and, and been in the program, but now just once you had that piece that's so important with a quarterback – it seemed to have just flourished. So I, I think, number one, you saw how special that wide receiver core was in that Clemson game. And then number two, what that inspired defense could do collectively, really getting pressure on Trevor Lawrence, showing some exotic blitzes and stunts, uh, and really even confusing Trevor Lawrence a little bit uh, with, with what they were showing on the back end. I, I think, again, like you said, that kind of put the country on notice that says, hey, North Carolina's kind of here, and, and they're right on the verge of something. 
uh, watch out. Looking at what UNC is bringing back from the skill positions, you have a guy like Sam Howell, you have an 1,000-yard rusher, Michael Carter, Javante Williams rushed for over 900 yards, uh, 2,000-yard receivers, and Deami Brown and Daz Newsom coming back. Then you still have to mention a guy like Bo Corrales who added over 500 receiving yards and six touchdowns. How special can this group be moving forward in year two in the air raid system? Man, I, I really think that they're going to have a, a big opportunity to challenge Clemson for, for that top offensive spot in the ACC. When you see how dynamic these guys are, essentially the entire skill position group coming back for UNC, I mean, those, those trio of wide receivers were special. I, I think there was some stat floating around uh, in terms of total yardage and touchdowns that it was like LSU's receiving core, Alabama's receiving core, and then UNC's when you saw what they were able to do with all those guys coming back. And then you, you add two fantastic running backs in Javante Williams and Michael Carter. It's going to be electricity. You have a, the, the one thing that I'm not disappointed in because you, you have no control over this, but uh, I guess upset would be the word is just to have a full spring with those guys to develop with each mm. other. And then a whole summer, obviously that's, that's impacted by this crazy pandemic that we're going through, but Already the trust is there with their quarterback and more receivers and really just knowing how Sam's going to throw the ball on various routes, how his wide receivers are going to adjust, uh, whether it's a whole shot for a, a too high safety uh, or, or different things that Sam might see. So really the sky is the limit for these guys, and I think it's going to be a very exciting year on the offensive side of the ball with no doubt. A previous point that you had touched on that I wanted to just uh, gloss over really quickly. To close the season, UNC, they had a huge win against NC State. They yep. blow out Temple in the bowl game. They win those games by a combined score of 96 to 23. I think a lot of UNC fans are hoping that's the team we see moving forward. Do you think that was a case of, like you had mentioned, uh, the playbook was becoming more unlocked for some of these guys? Or was it a case of just inferior opponents that UNC was kind of just beating up on? Uh, you know, it might be a little bit of a combination when, when you talk about the inferior opponents. But at the end of the day, you still have to execute, right? Whether you're on air, uh, you know, you still have to throw and catch the ball and, and do your assignments correctly. Uh, and and the, the feeling that I kept getting over and over again last year, especially towards the end of the year, watching UNC was they just have fun playing football. They enjoy it. It didn't matter what bowl game that they were going to go to, uh, you know, whether it was a lower tier bowl or the college football playoffs, those guys want to play. They have fun playing, uh, and that means something. You know, to be excited to get out, to go out there, uh, and to demonstrate who you are as a team to the country, they thrived on that, and I, I think they really enjoyed it. And so that's what I think we're going to see uh, is just that inspired football. Uh, again, I talk about on the offensive side, but the defense as well. You, you look at Taman Fox, you look at Tamarian Fox with Chas Surratt, uh, and then my boy Storm uh, in the backfield and defensive backfield and what they're able to do, there are some really key pieces that you should be very excited about for this UNC team moving forward. All right, let's take a quick break here so I can remind everyone about Johnny T-Shirt. Now more than ever, as a local business to Chapel Hill, Johnny T-Shirt needs your support during these trying times. They've got the perfect UNC Nike performance tees for your at-home workouts, and they also have the comfortable UNC apparel for you if you're just laying around the house. Whatever you're looking for, I'm sure Johnny T-Shirt has you covered. If for some reason you don't need anything right now, you could still support them with a gift card because let's be honest, at some point you are going to want new Carolina gear. And don't forget, Inside Carolina, premium subscribers save 10% off their orders. All right, getting back on track here, one of UNC's biggest question marks next year is replacing a guy like Charlie Heck. And now with no spring ball, I was wondering with you as a former offensive lineman, how difficult will it be for newcomers on the offensive line to replace those live reps they could have got? Yeah, I mean, that, that's so, so important. And, and especially at, at a group that is so cohesive and so reliant upon, uh, you know, knowing what the guy beside you is going to do. When you lose such a great leader, a great player, a great athlete like that with, with Heck and, and Charlie Heck and what he was able to accomplish, especially at a position that is a premium, right? A left tackle is essentially the most important position, quote unquote, on the offensive line. It's going to be interesting to see what, what Carolina does. I think that there's a couple of options that they have, uh, especially now not having the reps. 
uh, not having young guys to, to be able to go through this and, and say, hey, this is a solidified first five that we have. Uh, you know, so whenever that team comes back, you know, I, I think they're going to find different things. What I'm really interested to see if, if they're going to do is, does Jordan Tucker make that move to swing over to the left tackle? Or are they comfortable enough with their backup with whether it's Joshua or maybe another guy that, that climb, or climbs to the top for that left tackle spot uh, and they like Jordan at right tackle? So I think there are some options there, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see who runs out uh, game one for sure. Luckily for UNC, their coordinators remained in place, so it's the same system. They might be more complex going into year two, but it's the same system for the most part. Yeah. How difficult do you think it will be for teams like Miami and the Coastal where they're trying to implement an entire new system without spring ball? Yeah, it's going to be very tough. And again, I think that you know spring, summer, fall camp are really the most important times as a football player for development. Uh, for finding out who you are as a player. You know, there, there are these progressive stages that you go through from being a freshman all the way to a, a fifth-year senior that really you just figure out along the way during those time periods. Now, with that essentially taken away and gone, it, it's going to be very interesting to see how, how much are you doing on your own? How much are you in the playbook at home right now? Or are you just sitting on the couch eating potato chips and playing video games? So I think it's going to be very difficult for teams that have brand new systems like you just brought up. Uh, but, you know, with, with the virtual meetings, these Zoom meetings that they're able to do, I'm not sure on the hour limitations that have been placed. But I know teams are fully taking advantage of that. And it's just, again, it comes down to guys, how much does it matter to you that you want to be successful? Because there's no one there to hold your hand, you know, with this whole – uh, pandemic that's going on it, it's solely relying on you defensively Carolina has to replace players like Jason Strobridge and Aaron Crawford but coming back Chaz Surratt he's a nice building block for defensive coordinator Jay Bateman to work with you've been around locker rooms for a majority of your life have you ever seen a story quite like Chaz Surratt's where he goes from quarterback to linebacker and he's first team all ACC year one yeah, we, we haven't at all, you know, you know, and you think of these things and, and what a what a crazy position change to go from the quarterback of the offense to the quarterback of the defense as a linebacker and really uh, maybe something that, that shouldn't even have happened. I know there were some injuries that occurred in, in camp and maybe at week one where I, I don't know how much Chaz was even expected to play against South Carolina, but he gets the start. Uh, he goes in there and just really has a fantastic game uh, and, and just to see his instincts continue to develop his athletic ability, uh, everything translated so well to that linebacker position. And then you add on top of that the leadership, the selfless, selflessness to say, hey, I want to be a quarterback. I want to do this, but I want the team to be successful. I'm going to go try defense and then to be so successful. It's a fantastic story. Uh, I think it's a great story for the nation to see, to not just give up. Don't just quit when you face adversity because uh, at the end of the day, if you want to be a football player, that's a shiny example of how you can go from quarterback, the, the most celebrated, uh, highly anticipated position, to then the captain of your defense. Uh, and I think Chaz is such a great story that it's, I cannot wait to see with a full year of being a linebacker and really studying that defense what he's going to look like this fall. I thought it would be interesting to get your perspective on this. You saw firsthand how Dabo ran his program and – how he built Clemson into a team that is always in contention for the national championship. How can North Carolina get to that level with Mac Brown? You know, I think you're well on your way. You know, there's no doubt that it starts with, with who you have and, and the team that you have right now, which North Carolina is in fantastic shape, uh, the athletes that they have to really compete with anybody. Uh, I think when you look at burners on the outside, big, strong defense and offensive linemen, and then a secondary and, and, back seven in the defense that, that really can can play, can run, can move. Uh, and then it's with recruiting, which, again, we know Mac Brown and that staff have done an unbelievable job at. Uh, it, it's just really staying consistent. How can they keep that going year in and year out where they're in the top ten? And right now, I mean, it's been fantastic to watch how they've been really blazing the trails, keeping those heavily recruited, highly recruited guys in the state of North Carolina to stay home, uh, I think that's so important and, and really how they've been able to do it, uh, you know, with the facilities, with the, with the gear, with all the cool things that they have going on. It just makes it so much easier to sell. So when you have the talent and you're developing it already on your team, 
and then you're going year in and year out and getting the top players in your state and then in the country, that's the formula to success. And then you know what the coaching staff can do. You've seen the numbers, uh, the stats. It all speaks for itself. Recruiting is a great place to start. And at the time of this recording for the class of 2021, Ohio State has the number one class. Clemson has the number two class. And then it's North Carolina at three, which to me, it's still crazy to kind of hear about. But as <laughs> someone from Fayetteville, North Carolina, you're, you're wearing your high school t-shirt, Jack Britt High School. What has it been like for you to see Mac Brown put such a huge emphasis on keeping the in-state talent in-state? You know, I think that's where it starts, and, and it's been fantastic to watch him put so much emphasis in that. And if, if that would have been the recruiting pitch, uh, you know, to me when I was in high school, hey, man, stay here, represent this state. Uh, you know, all of us are going to come together and do something special. Maybe it would have persuaded me to, to think differently, but that's just that wasn't the case back then. Uh, so I think that is a genius move. Uh, when we had Coach Brown on the huddle for the first signing day, you know, that's what I asked him. I said, Coach, how are you – or how much emphasis has you, have you been putting on keeping the guys in, keeping them at home, and representing this state? And he said, Eric, that, that's the most important thing. We can't lose guys who are in our backyard to Clemson, to Georgia, to Florida, Alabama, et cetera. Uh, we, we can't do that. If they're right here, they've grown up watching the Tar Heels, we've got to keep them and make sure that they know it's important to represent this state. And that's exactly what they've been able to do with these last two classes. When the Jordans are about the seventh best thing that you're pitching, you know you have a good <laughs> <Exactly>. product, right? <laughs> no doubt about it. I need some of those shoes. If you have any connections, I'm a big fan of the ones. If you can send those some of my way. I'll text some of my people, but there's no guarantee there you go. they're going to answer. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the ACC as a whole, do you think that it is North Carolina that's the biggest threat to Clemson moving forward? I think so. I think that they're, you know, whatever heat I'm going to catch for this, I fully expect to see a top 10 matchup uh, in Charlotte, the Tar Heels, the Tigers, and winner goes to the college football playoff. I think that that's the type of year that we can see from North Carolina. I think the schedule sets up really well for you. It's, it's difficult, uh, but if, you, if you're waking up on, on week four, four and oh, you know, you, you're going to have, you're going to have a very good football team and a top tier football team. I think that should be the expectation. I think that should be the expectation moving forward from Mac Brown, from that staff, with how they're recruiting, what they've done developmentally wise with their players, because that that's how you get there. That that's how you get to those championships. Is mentally you have to have that in your mind to where you're thinking that. Uh, but I think Ella, or uh, excuse me, Louisville is going to have another uh, big push as well, and, and be another team that you need to keep your eye on. Eric, you just gained a ton of Tar Heel fans <laughs> having said that, that you think this no is going to be shaping up for a, a spot in the college playoffs. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me. I had a great time talking with you. Hope you and your family are staying safe and we have to do this again sometime in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love it, man. Great talking with you.